Okay, game recap. Um, kind of a tale of two games, as you probably know from the score. But, you know, as you look at things, you know, it's 28-3. We got two different chances to go up 35-3 and kind of blow the game open. Screwed up, um, you know, with a turnover, with a missed throw that could be a touchdown. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, didn't put them away. So that's a good lesson to learn as we play better teams. You know, we wouldn't be able to get away with some of the things that happened in the game, especially the three turnovers in one half of football. So, you know, <clears throat> always try to find, you know, something good in the bad. And, you know, it forced our guys to play a little longer than maybe we would have wanted to, um, but also got them in shape. So they had to play longer and play in that heat and play into the fourth quarter. So, <clears throat> you know, that part of it was good. Lane, is the plan is the plan for Luke still to start? Uh, and I guess just um, going forward, would you like to have this thing figured out by Georgia Tech, or is there a chance that this thing kind of keeps going on as, as long as it needs to? Yeah, like I've said before, we'd always like to have it figured out. This is not ideal. Luke will go first, um, you know, in this game, so that gives both guys an opportunity to go first and um, see how he plays. So. You know, he didn't get as many, many opportunities as we would have liked. Obviously, we would have liked his series to go further. And Jackson's interception, you know, was going to switch after that series. But, you know, I think, as you guys know, I take a lot into the psyche of the quarterback and didn't want his last play to be an interception. So, so that ate up one of Luke's series. Uh, Lane, Saturday, uh, O-line pass protection seemed to kind of be a struggle for the O-line. Just from getting going back, looking at film, what kind of variables did you see with that? Was it just having guys in different places or from your perspective? Uh, yeah, I thought our O-line did really good in the run game and not very good in the passing game. Um, you know, it's not all in them. You know, there's some other stuff, stuff in there, but, you know, it's a really fitting of our passing game not being uh, really on. And so those guys have some good players. They always have, you know, um, especially defensively. And that's why they beat LSU, Nebraska. Um, they always got a lot of Alabama kids that are really good players, you know, that Alabama Auburn doesn't take. And um, so, you know, you got to remember that too. We're glad we're won. we won because a lot of times, you know, people don't win these games. Plus, you always feel the way you end normally right after the game. And because we didn't end well, as you guys know, I was pretty down. but. That's really better than the other way, because the other way would be, man, we came out, you know, when everybody's ones versus ones, and you know we're down at halftime or something. So I think it's a lot easier to correct finishing and doing things well in the second half versus, you know, boy, we're just not very good. Just out of curiosity, Ulysses Bentley getting two carries, one of which was a touchdown. Was that by design, or was that was it just a matter of Evans and Judkins running the ball? But if it's not broke, don't fix it. it was not a, by design. Um, he actually went second. Um, <clears throat> and did a good job. And sometimes some things in a series happen or more passes are called. So uh, that was not by design. He's done a great job. Lane, when you did get the, when you did get the chance to evaluate the tape on Jackson afterwards, just was it the same assessment as you had post game or did you kind of see more things uh, when looking at the tape? Probably just a little bit of the same thing, a little bit more of the same things, um, the good and the bad. You know, ran really well, strong, moved around in the pocket well, got out of some trouble. You know, we didn't have any sacks in the game, um, even with average pass protection. Um, but then made, you know, some mistakes, really two critical ones, interception, and not the third down, you know, easy completion in front of him because, you know, his feet are screwed up. And, you know, said it before, you know, you get spoiled. Um, and also, you know, like someone reminded me, that was – Matt's fourth year last year in college, you know, and so um, when you have young guys like this, you're going to go through growing pains, you know. I think that it's always been that way, and then every once in a while now we have the, you know, Jalen Hurts or Bryce Youngs, you know, the, that, you know, come around with all the pieces around them and everything and, and really don't make a lot of those mistakes, but, you know, normally those are going to happen. When you have young guys plus so many newcomers around them, What's the secret to kind of coaching them? How can you help them find that consistency from half to half? Well, you know, we had tough, you know, tell the truth Monday, you know, is what the meetings are in the morning, um, the good, bad, and ugly of the game. And so, 
you know, there's some loafs in there. There's some not effort that we're looking for. And like I said, guys, we're, we're nothing against other places. Everyone does things different. So I'm not saying we do it better. So, but we've, we're trying to break some habits and people just coach different on certain things. And I, and I told them, a couple of you guys come from other places, like this was your one game. All right, we told you it, you screwed up. You have to break these habits or, you know, your playing time is going to suffer. Just after watching the film, how would you uh, evaluate the wide receiver play from Saturday? I didn't think they got a ton of opportunities. You know, it was a very big zone drop deep game, which is what part of why the run was so successful too. Um, you know, a few alignment issues and effort finishing things. Um, so there really wasn't a whole lot of opportunities. Uh, getting to look on film, your thoughts now on the linebacker, especially the game Kari had, but getting film of seeing that group against somebody else now, because I know that was kind of your one question heading into the season. Yeah, they, they did really well. So, you know, probably be the equivalent of if we were sitting up here and the quarterback was 80% completion between the two of them, four touchdowns, no picks or something. So that was the concern over on defense. They did really well. Now, we're going to have bigger challenges. Obviously, and um, you know some more space games. That was not a space game. You know they played in tight a lot, so um, we're still going to have bigger challenges. But they, they they did great, and actually, you know, the defensive players of the game, you know, were the two new linebackers. So it's actually interesting. I didn't even realize it until I was reading them off to the players. And Q was special team, or Q was offense, and the punter was special team. So our four players of the game were all. Brand new this year, so. But I also told Dolphins we should never, ever, ever have a player of the game be a punter. So, you know that's not a good thing. Kind of going off that, uh, after watching the tape, what was Jackson's deep ball to JJ Henry a pass uh, that you expect to be caught, or was it a good play by the safety? Well, I thought the ball, and this is very critical because it's so far down the field. You know, it was a few yards under throwing. You know, could have been in JJ and stride, but then JJ also. You know, could have made a play on it. You know, they kind of fell into it. It's really a coverage where the nickel really had him and he beat him and the safety fell back in. It's not really on him, but, you know, that stuff happens sometimes. Otherwise, it really would have been a cool play where he'd been wide open. But we got to make competitive plays. Coach Locke watched a lot of football over the weekend. Seems like a lot of offensive lines are having trouble with pressure. Is, is that new? A relatively new defensive philosophy just to get after people or I mean more prevalent than it has been uh, I don't know I mean you've watched way more than I did so I wouldn't be able to tell you a week one evaluation of that um, I don't know that I've sensed that I think people just have different philosophies you know some of these people now kind of like us Arkansas likes people go, go the other way keep the ball in front of them. and that, that's what our defense did you know, they didn't give explosive plays for the most part, kept the ball in front of them. Um, you know, and had negative plays, I think, you know, 10 tackles for losses and all the sacks. Little off topic, but last week it was announced that the CFP was going to be expanding to 12 teams. I'm just curious your thoughts on the, how that kind of affects things. I mean, I was told by Keith Carter, I really, Last thing on my mind or thing I would worry about is however many years from now that is. But I mean, my statement's always been that's better, you know, um, because more people have an opportunity instead of people sitting in a room deciding these four. And they can't be right, nothing against them. Um, otherwise, in basketball, the number one seeds would all be in the final four. So I think it would, it would go a long ways to determine the best team better. Lane, are you concerned at all with as the two quarterback system kind of keeps going on that that's going to affect the guy's confidence the longer that both of them are playing and not a star has been named yet? I do. I mean, look at Luke's play because of the different, you know, voice tones and he was going to change a mic point and they snapped the ball thinking it was, you know, his cadence. So, um, you know, you never want that, but you also want to make sure you find the best guy. So, you know, this is what we think gives us the best chance long-term to win, to evaluate the situation, to get the best player. And we still may be wrong after that. It happens all the time. 
you talked about some of the new guys impressing Davison in his first ever college game. Looked like he made some pretty sound plays. Just what you see on tape from him? Yeah, same thing since the day he got here. Much like Taishin the year before, does not seem like a freshman at all. Um, nothing rattled him out there. Came up, made big stops and big plays, and um, just really cool to have because it's very unique to find these guys, you know, like him, like Taishin, like Q, you know, that are just so unique mental makeup you know, to be able to perform as true freshmen in major college football and, and play like that's awesome. All right, guys, have a good week.